kommen wir jetzt in der Kleine zu der Verdunstelierungsstimme ab und schlüssel ist gut. The key difference is between security to kunst and security to kunst. In the beat of kunst, proof of work system, sustainable for the future. What are side chains and side chains? Why crypto is not safe? security token. How do you know? One of them is look at the functionality of the token. What will the token do? If you're doing that by a platform like Binance, you know that Binance, the token, you can use it to get 50% discounts. You can use the token to vote. You can use the token for X, Y, Z. That is Binance. When you go to another um, uh, company platform X, you know that these things are being used. But when you look at some platforms, one year, two years, nobody is using the token. It's just there. And because it's cost for questioning. So, what is the utility of the token? Let's go to ICO drops and see some of the upcoming ICOs, some of the active ICOs, and some of the ICOs that have ended. Ask yourself something like this. Do you need a token for it? There, there might be a justifiable reason for it. But if every platform that is coming up to do business is trying to create their own token, it's a business model that's going to fail. Do you need a token for this? Do you need a token for this? It all boils down to the people who are not willing to build within an ecosystem. Oh, Ethereum is not big enough. Oh, this is not big enough. Yeah. Let's take, for example, you're building blockchain platforms. You need a token. Okay. But to me, 
if you're building a dab, you don't need your own token. There are few platforms that need a token. And you want to be careful which of them does not need and which of them need. So ask what is the functionality of the token. The other thing again is what is the company's marketing if effort focused on? I have talked about these things several times and several times. Is a significant chunk of its online literature, for example, in forums, Facebook, and on its website, directed at investors? Another key question Is a significant chunk of its literature, that is, the website, forums, Facebook, Twitter, and all that, is it directed at investors? You have a platform like this now. We have Amazis. Amazis is a platform that help with um, marketing and all that. SEO marketing, they help with bounties and all that. You want to ask yourself, all the write up, why are they focus on? All the bounties and Abino. All the bounties are simply focused on one key thing to get investors to invest. There's nothing there that they're not focusing on how do we write up, how do we bring systems to make people to use this project. All of them are just pre-ICU. And the question is, after the ICU, let's let's go on to I ran on tech. So this is Ivanotech. You go in on the channel, you see um, one or two platforms that come up and give a kind of post post ICU interview. Please take a seat. Take a. This is where we are now. This is where we've reached so far, and this is where we are going. Look at this. Play to leave. ICU. Which of which of the other which of the other platforms? We have uh, Moak. We have uh, Puma Pay. We have Latium. And there are many other platforms. So we have the pre ICU. And then we have the post ICU. So there has to be a form of accounting before the ICU and some of the ICU. So if so, this should raise concern that the token is a security and that the regulatory intervention is likely to be just around the corner. If the company is focused on trying to attract people to use its platform, it's not using wording focused on any profits and discuss and instead discuss the functionality of the token, then the legitimacy is more convincing. And then the next thing again is don't focus on the soft framework. Evaluate things for yourself. Okay, number four, number four sign. Beware of companies putting tokens on exchange. Yeah. If this is an ICO and they finished the ICO maybe to them and they are listening on the exchange. Let's say within one week, you've not developed a product. You said you're raising X amount of dollars. You've not developed the product. You have no proof that you have business or customers or neither have you started making profit. And you're going to list on a message. That is not done in the centralized world. Nobody goes to list a stock on the NASDAQ stock exchange without giving the proof that they've been in business for years that they are making profits and then there's a possibility of them actually progressing so when companies are desperate to list tokens on exchange you want to be very careful there are times some people gamble with more than they put in the and they want to get a quick box it's good 
But some of the times, they say, if you play with fire, you are going to be burnt. What is, not, what is number five sign? Does, does published content state or suggest that investors can earn a profit? Online content from the company posted on blogs, forums, social media platforms, or endorsing third party like cryptocurrency YouTubers suggesting that gains can be realized from purchasing tokens should consign investors. So when you hear things like, as more users get on the platform, the more valuable your token becomes. Now, I want to define two, two things here. One of them is the issue of cryptocurrency pundits. If you search for the word a pundit, who is a pundit? Let's search, let's ask Google, who is a pundit? An expert in a particular subject or field which is frequently called upon to give their opinion to the public. Now, an expert first in a particular field who is called upon to give their opinion. That is their opinion, not a well accepted and it may not be true. So be careful of the currency pundits on YouTube. There are many of them that are good, there are many of them that are bad. You want to do a background check on them. You want to ask your know, why. Why are they actually giving some review on or some opinions about this project? You want to ask the why. Then the other thing again is, as more users get on the platform, the more valuable your tokens become. That is what is called the greater fool theory. The greater fool theory. The greater fool theory in, in economics or university says states that one fool today if let's say let's say we have three fools x fool y fool and z all of all of them are fools x bought and this is a token let's say the token is token a so x bought it yesterday so yesterday could be yesterday last month last year Okay, let's say the past. Now, today, we have today, which is now. And then we'll have the future. So what is the greater fool? X bought this token yesterday and is hoping that someone will come and buy it today. And maybe in the future so that he can actually make it at a more higher price so that he can actually make it. And then why? Is buying the token today simply because maybe some people have bought it before and he's hoping that in the future someone else is going to buy it there is no business there this project is not making profit we cannot account for how many people that they are using the platform we cannot account for what they are doing with the money we will only have tokens and we're just holding the tokens and we're saying the more users come on board the more valuable the token will become. Now, it that comes for the issue of who really are users. Because if you have the if you have the iPhone, this is the iPhone. You cannot tell me that those who iPhone, okay, iPhone, and then Apple, Apple stock. You have Apple as a company, they have the iPhone, they have the Mac, they have the this and that products, iTunes and all that. You cannot tell me the users of iPhone, of sorry, of Apple are those that have the stock. And purchase the stock from wherever 
they purchase the stock from. Those that own any piece of stock are not the users in the platform. The users for the Apple system are those who are using the iPhone. In one, one, when they are using one of their products, you have iTunes and you have all the services they have. Those are the people you can call users. So next time, when we're giving a definition of who really are users, users are not those who have the token. Please know that. The number 16 is that regulators can intervene at any time. Now, one of the things you have to know is that if regulators intervene in a case, the regulators are going to confiscate all the assets and resources of that project. That, and that is going to include your funds. The regulators are not going to initiate a process to decimate or to give back your tokens to give back what you contributed. So you will be at loss. So you want to be very careful of those. Who, number one, be careful of those who are trying to evade the law and who justify such. So be careful of those who evade the law. Security tokens are not bad. You come, have the legal framework, have your lawyers, you know that. You raise the money using security tokens. But if you're trying to evade the law, <coughs> by writing a lengthy paper, and you call it disclaimer, maybe it takes 11 pages or how many pages, and you're saying, this token does not constitute in any way. You know many people on YouTube, you know what they do. Or anyway, they'll tell you that disclaimer this is not a financial advice. That is the first disclaimer. And then what is the content? The content is actually financial advice. So you, you can see such hypocrisy. So be careful of those who evade the law. And who justifies such by trying to convince you that there's actually a use case for such a token? What is the next thing? The next thing is that is the proof of work algorithm. The proof of work algorithm is it actually? sustainable for the future. You have Bitcoin. You have all that distributed ledger that are actually using the proof of work system. You have Ethereum, for example, when you write smart contract in the Ethereum language, programming language, it has to communicate with the Ethereum virtual machine. It has to, it, it is executed on the EVM. And when you call a function, you are required to pay some fee, which is called the gas, and all that. And now you have to know the between the different levels or classes of consensus. We have uh, pre pre Nakamoto consensus of distributed distributed systems. And then we will have the Nakamoto consensus. And then now you have the post Nakamoto consensus. The pre Nakamoto consensus, they were nothing like rewards. There was nothing like much consumption of energy and all that. Nakamoto was, oh, we have the reward, we have the consumption of energy and all that. And then the post Nakamoto is that it has. A diff, it will have to take a different approach. So what is the biggest problem? The biggest problem is 
can this thing continue we have the second largest cryptocurrency by usage or second or third we have ethereum moving from the proof of work system to the proof of stake so the question is while we are trying to achieve consensus is this thing sustainable in the long run with this saying that bitcoin mining is taking one percent of the world's energy one percent of the world's energy if you're taking five gigawatts a day to mine crypto just bitcoin how much more how much more other blockchain systems that are built on such consensus mechanism and it's an argument we argue on twitter most times there is so much argument around the world there is something like how do we profile solution to this if you have a business in the cost of running the business is more than what you are making from the business then it is not worth it people are people are trying to justify there was a report that says it cost 80 percent the cost of when you that is if you're able to mine a block it costs to 80 percent of such money so it means that if you had a hundred let's say the the the, the reward was ten ten dollars you are spending you are spending eight dollars for that that is not business it's not business you're almost at a loss so there are many claims like oh is this thing going to continue i don't think so they will have to profile solution possible solution In the next few years if possible to this problem always know that the first mover advantage does not hold every time before social media they were be sorry before facebook they were um, friends that they were different projects before whatsapp they were different projects so the first mover advantage does not hold so the, the people that call themselves Bitcoin maximalists and they practice every other attempt to move away from the Bitcoin model and implement something better but fade in some aspect, maybe price or whatsoever. And they are practicing man say, oh, Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency that is going to stay. Those are aud audacious, audacious claims. You have Microsoft, for example. Before Microsoft, there was what? There was Unis. What is the history of operating systems? evolution we have Android operating system for the mobile phones is that the first operating system so but to bring claims and say this is the one that is going to remain it's audacious so I hope that people in the Bitcoin cycle actually find a solution to this Okay, what is the next news we have before us? The next news we have before us
We have the cop scene. and are used by uh, a carrier or agent to acknowledge the receipt of a cargo. Cargo has said that its smart bill of landing was issued electronically with the help of an ultra-secure and reliable public chain network in just minutes instead of days and the chance of loss, theft or damage of the bill of landing has been dramatically reduced to zero. The blockchain document was used for processing the container which was released in the port of Copa, Slovenia, when it arrived on Sunday 19th August, having completed its journey from Shanghai abroad. And this is what they said. With our idea, our idea was to solve one problem at a time and not to solve all the problems that the shipping industry is facing at once. Looking at the current situation, we made the proper decision to stick in our game our game is playing and by successfully completing the, the, the official test we're including our development and testing testing phase of cargo x smart be like the solution which should not be available to all logistics and shipping companies who want to reduce that bill of landing issuing and processing cost 
by up to 85 percent as well as to save weeks so you're thinking about breaking the solution that saves time that saves cost and then that the possible case of thefts is reduced okay this is what i want to bring before you 50 blockchain reward use cases this infographic was put together by the ceo of essential as you can see essential dominates one of them is the government essential developed world first blockchain solution to manage international logistics hub together with traffic labs in the finnish government you have full time full time you have um, identification using uport you have payment repo uh, remittance and all that you have insurance aig is already using blockchain aig is on the insurance giant endangered species protection carbon effect ibm is using the hyperledger fabric blockchain in china to monitor carbon offset trading azure ethereum blockchain can be accessed as a cloud service courtesy of microsoft azure border control supply chain healthcare shipping real estate energy land registry computation advertising border control journalism waste management energy what is the next thing diamonds to track the the, the importation and sale of diamonds fine art national security for the past two years the united states government Department of Homeland Security has been using blockchain to record and safely store data captured from its security camera. Can you imagine that? Tourism. Transition. Energy. Railway. Enterprise. Music. Fishing. From insurance to energy to a remittance to this all these things cannot be done by bitcoin so the idea of bringing oh bitcoin is the only one that's going to exist yeah it's going to exist for now maybe for the next 10 years for the next 20 years but you cannot say that the only operating system that's going to that is uh, going to exist before was unis we have unis we have linux you have ubuntu you have mac os you have the Programming languages. Oh, it, we only have, we have C. C is going to be the only programming language. We have C sharp. We have over thirty programming languages. So with that, guys, I want to call today's live streaming quiz. The six key differences between security and utility tokens. The Bitcoin consumption. Okay, this is the last one our uh, discussion for today. What are side chains and side chains? Now, there are problems that blockchain is facing. One of them is scalability. The other is blockchain bloat. Scalability is that other in our citizens, we talk about a business is scaling. It means that if you are adding more offices, more workers, right? If you're adding more workers, more staff, the business is supposed to grow. But when you talk about blockchain, Bitcoin, for example, the more people get added to the network, it's only increase. It's only increasing the competition. It's not scaling. It's not increasing the TPS. It's only increasing the competition to mine this stuff. Then what is blockchain bloat? So blockchain bloat has to do with the recording of this data. You literally record the data in your hardware. So if this is your hardware. 
Bitcoin, for example, I heard Bitcoin is almost 250 gig gigabytes. So blockchain Bluetooth, we are recording transactions that happened many years ago. Yeah, it's good. But do we need those data? Who is do those data useful? There's an argument to it. It's useful in some regards. Sometimes it's not, it's not useful. So what are side chains? How do we solve all these problems? Is it every transaction you're supposed to record on the chain? That is where side chains come from. So in a simple thing, side chains are particularly children chains, like children. So let's say in an office, rather than one person is doing all the work, we now have units. Okay, let's say for example, you have an office in Ghana, and then you have another office in Nigeria. And in order to, not to make things very complicated, there has to be a mechanism that communicates between the office in Ghana to the office in Nigeria. And then what you want to do, can okay, there has to be that, that link, we pass it through it, and then there is no much emphasis on one office or the other. That is where the concept of uh, uh, side chains come in. How do we do things like maybe build games on the side or payment systems on the side without actually impacting the whole network? Without actually what? Impacting the whole network. So there are two things that come from it. The underlying technologies, federation is a group of servers that add in between points between the machine and the server. Talk about the link. And then we have security. So you have to have something like a mesh mining and all that, and it costs to give up these things. So what are some of the prominent blockchain uh, projects that are working on side and side chains? So I would stock trying to bring it in chain that we have with smart contracts development and all that. So they'll be back to the Bitcoin. We have Alpha. We have Liquid. We have the proof of authority. It is building on Ethereum. We have Loom also. So what are the advantages of side uh, side chains? The advantage is that it helps blockchain to scale. And sometimes it also lowers the cost. Because when you're talking about scaling, scaling has to do with increase in transaction speed, output, decrease in, in, in mining fees. So it means that th there has to be network effect. If it costs $5 to service today with 2,000 nodes, the question is if you're adding 10,000 nodes, it should be more faster and it should be more cheaper. And then miners need to ensure the safety of the chain. So there's the security uh, disadvantage. And that. So we need side chains or we need layer two technologies to help scale blockchain and with that i want to say a very big thank you bye